So as you can see, graduation is about the accomplishment of learning. And um, someone was talking to me the other day about education and the educational process. And, you know, when you do a long educational process, you wonder, you know, why you need all these years. Uh, I've come to understand, and I, I don't, know, don't know if you'll agree with me, that, that doing this educative process really is about cramming what you could learn in an entire lifetime, what might even take you an entire lifetime, into something much smaller, into some uh, smaller period of time. And so it is definitely a huge accomplishment that you are seeing uh, with these children. And to hear the children this morning answering the questions concerning one of the greatest stories ever told, even though it probably uh, you know, was PG-13 this morning, um, uh, you, maybe, you know, we, we, we tend to say, you need to know these things. And, and I know that you parents, uh, maybe at bedtime, might want to not talk about the way that Goliath ended up. But I would encourage you to know or to, to help your children to know that there will be an end that is coming. And it will be an end for the problems that your children may face in life. I don't, I don't think we, we can probably tell it in a different way that might be a little less beheading. But um, I think that it's really good for our kids to know that God has a plan. And that plan has an ending. And then there's going to be the rest of what he has in store for us. I, I did some thinking this week and, and, and some interacting, and as you did some thinking and some interacting, and I'm hoping that you felt as I did that I'm really glad that this thing that we do called life right now, which includes the schooling that we have and everything, I'm really glad that it is part of our eternal life. Oh, you obviously didn't hear me. Okay. The fact is, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior from sin, if you have said yes, like we are hoping that the people who do Bible studies, be they children or their parents, maybe I, I, I would love to say children and their parents. Please come, parents. We need you to drive those kids here to take advantage of what Milt and Denise are going to put out there. But if it is for you too that you need to be here, please be here to hear about the Word, to hear about God, to hear what His plan is, because once you accept that, then everything that happens afterwards is part of your eternal life. I was saying to a friend this week that most of the time that we talk about these kinds of things are at funerals. Well, no more. We should be talking about the joy that we have in the Lord now because guess what? Today is part of your eternal life. So I love to ask naughty questions and so I can and you can now ask the naughty questions to somebody and say, so how's your eternal life going? People are going to blink and they're going to say, I thought that only began after I was resurrected from the dead. No, that's the whole point. We need to be letting this idea sink into our Adventist thick skulls. Eternal life begins when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Meaning, today is part of your eternal life. It's pretty cool, huh? Okay. Okay. This educative experience that our children have been going through, that we are so proud that they have, that they have finished and that they're moving through with, with huge speed because we know how fast life is going by. As, as, I didn't think that it would be true, but by gum, it's true. As, old, as the older I'm getting, the, the, the more I'm realizing just how fast things go by. 
Okay, they're thinking, oh, it's so good to be out for the summer. The next thing they'll be saying is, oh, no, I have to go back to school because it went by so fast. You did such a good job of taking care of them in the summertime that the summer just goes by so fast. We are proud. We are proud of them being part of this, this educative process because we have a dream for them. And that's what I, I, I may want to just talk to you about for just a few seconds. Church, parents, I am praying, and I know you are praying, that the dream that you have for your children is that they will stand next to you when Jesus comes. There is no other eternal life kind of dream for family. I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you that the school system, thank you, Jared, for all you do, okay, representing our big school. Uh, there are many other parts of our Adventist school system. There's many other Christian school systems. Even the public school system, which has many devoted Christian teachers in it, they would like our children to progress. They would like our children to know what we want them to know is that our ultimate dream for our children is that they know Jesus and that they stand beside us in the kingdom of heaven saying yes to the God of the universe, saying yes to the plan that he has for their life, not only in this part of their eternal life, but in the rest of the eternal life. Uh, someone said to me recently, you know, Ellen makes it very clear. That's Ellen G. Ellen G. White. She makes it very clear that the servant aspect of our life in the here and now, we should get used to that. Uh, Pathfinders teaches, go on God's errands. If you're like, oh man, do I have to? God, this is inconvenient. I'm sorry. I've got other things to do. When we see him face to face, my friends, she says, that's what we're going to be doing for the rest of eternity. We're going to be going on God's errands. We will be his servants. I said to my friend as we were talking, it's not a, a cloud and a harp. It's not. And really, I don't, I don't think that that is what I would want to be doing anyway. Do you? I think that I'm excited about seeing Jesus, about being in heaven and being with him because he will have something for me to do. And, and, and we, will, we will be ever learning more and more and more. We will never stop learning. So we just celebrated the accomplishment of our children in this life, learning certain things in the educative system. And I want you to know that it does help them. But what is more important is what you teach them so that when they are asked how many stones David took, they know. Yes, and yes, one of those stones found its way into Goliath's head. And if you read the new book by Malcolm Gladwell, you will see a different picture. You will realize that David came to a sword fight with a gun. Gladwell says, that that rock and the density of that rock, which he has gone and checked out in the Valley of Elah, in the, in the pouch of a, an experienced slinger like David, meant that you had an infantryman that was up against an artillery man. He didn't have a chance. Artillery slingers in both David's day and even into the Middle Ages were able to knock birds out of the air with their accuracy. The density of that stone, the velocity with which David probably used, meant the same as a 45 caliber pistol. Goliath didn't stand a chance. David did this in the inspiration 
of the Holy Spirit. He is an example to our children. He is an example to us of what being together with God can bring. So yes, your children need to know this. Your children need to know that your ultimate dream for them is that you will stand together on the sea of glass. Why am I telling you all this? Quite simply because I want to say congratulations to the students and I want to say congratulations to all of you parents and I want to say congratulations to all of us if we will but realize that the ultimate goal is not a good job. And you're saying, what? See, now the pastor's gone to meddling. Because let me just, let me just go one step further. Yes, I'm going to pick on Matthew. Matthew, love you. Matthew, Matthew got a scholarship. Matthew's going to a great college. He's going to play football for them. And then he's going to continue with his trajectory. Uh, Matthew, I hope you don't mind me saying this. He is going to come back to California and would like to become a firefighter. Okay? And serve right here in California. I say, wow, that's great. Uh, Davina wants to do criminal justice. Great. Okay? This is the world we live in today. This is the way in which we're glad that our children would like to interact with that. But we have to be willing to raise their sights higher and say, we are living part of our eternal life now. As a family, we are going to walk into the kingdom of heaven together and we would like nothing to be in the way of that happening. Is that the story you've told your kids? Is that the story that we, I mean, I loved how Milton pointed to everybody here today, even the pastor. Is that what we're about when we come together to worship God? We, we bring our children to Sabbath school. We bring our children to the baptismal class. We ourselves come. We ourselves participate in study and prayer. And what do you call it? School. That's why we call it Sabbath school, where we have the opportunity to learn more about our Heavenly Father, who we are hoping this next week will send us on his errands, are we not? Uh, I mean, are, or are you saying, oh, well, wait, God, I'm really, really tired. Oh. Then what should your prayer be? Lord, the burdens upon me right now are too much. I need more power. I need more strength. Let me ask you a question. If you don't eat when you get to heaven, are you going to die? Okay, so why are, there, why are there fruits on the trees in heaven? We're told about the fruit on the tree of life. Why, why are they there? Enjoyment. They're there because God is going to give us this, this life together with him that is, that is not dependent on us eating, drinking water, sleeping like we have to do in this existence. So why would we not begin to act like God is going to provide for all of our needs now. So please, as you are moving forward in your educative process, as you are teaching your children, let's keep this ultimate goal in mind. Because between now and then, we're living this part of our eternal life in the valley of the shadow of death where there are mean things that are happening. Maybe you caught my double entendre, my double meaning in the title today. In the meantime, there is an evil presence in this world that is just mean. We have to help our kids know, we have to ourselves know how it is that we are going to continue to live for the King of Heaven in the meantime. Between now and when He comes back. It's going to take some, it's going to take some uh, courage. 
It's going to take some strength. It's going to take a, a perspective that is informed by the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Lord, what will you have me to do today so that I can help someone else know that in these mean times, there is a God who loves them, who wants them to know about him so that they too will want to live forever with him. That's our mission. In a, in a nutshell, that's, that's our mission. So thank you for coming today to celebrate the graduations of our children. But I'm going to ask you something. Please don't ever plan to graduate from the love of God. Don't ever plan to graduate to another country in the universe. Understand that by coming here this morning, you are giving your allegiance to the king of the universe. And as such, you want to be one of his subjects. You want to be one of his, his kingdom. And therefore, you are going to, with all your strength, your mind, your soul, as the, as the Shema says in Deuteronomy 6, you are going to go after him. And that you're going to teach your children as you stand up, as you sit down, as you go in, as you go out. The Bible says, teach your children about that God. And then together, we become this congregation, this people who choose to congregate ourselves, we become this influential group of people in the society where we touch, where we have, in, have opportunity to point people's thoughts to this God who loves us so much, who's created us, and who's given us life. I don't know about you, but uh, it, it, it's been... It's been uh, Interesting, as I have had thoughts, and I'm sure that you have similar thoughts, that when we focus, as we have this month, on the goodness of God, that I, I don't know where to stop. I, I just start thinking of all these amazing things that are happening in my life because of the goodness of God. And I just got to tell somebody. So I'm, I, I'm going to encourage you once again. Let's this week... Let's focus on the goodness of God and realize that when the Holy Spirit says, hey, tell that person over there, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I just wonder. I mean, I, I saw the pictures again. Front cover of People magazine. Dare I mention again, I, I don't know about you, but it's really affected me that, that Kate and Anthony decided to not be alive anymore really affected me. I don't know why. Maybe because I watched Anthony go to all different places in the world that I'd love to go. Maybe because I thought that Kate was, was a pretty good designer and, and kind of the American dream. And so I, I've been wondering, what, what part of their thinking took them to a place that was so dark as to not have any joy? No joy. So dark that they couldn't go on anymore. The question I have for you is, how many people do you know who feel like that? And if you don't know anybody that feels like that, maybe God hasn't, hasn't called you yet, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be, be practicing the presence of God in your life so that you can have joy in your life and that you can share when that moment comes because lots of people they don't know why they don't know why people kept to themselves to, uh, uh, Kate and, and Anthony kind of kind of kept things to themselves and, and people didn't notice and then suddenly now they're not here this is the world this is the world in which we live the valley of the shadow of death so with David this week I want you to make it your prayer. I will pay attention to God. That's the positive from Revelation 14, 7. I will not pay attention to the evil empire. I will watch what God wants to have happen in my life. I will live this part of my eternal life to the full. Amen.